My name is David Wall and my speech is called Visualizing Inequality, Dallas, Food, and Film. Now if we take a look at this big red map here, we can see the percentage of food inequality in households in the United States. It has a low of 7% up in this area, and that's still a lot. That's about 1 in 10 people going hungry. But it has a high of 19.5%. That is 1 in 5 people going hungry. Now if we calculate everyone in just being that, then that would be three people just about being food insecure in our group alone. Now, I've been doing research on this topic for about two years now, and I currently work at the Child Nutrition Services Department at the nonprofit City Square, helping to prevent food insecurity in children. And I believe a localized documentary is a good option to both raise awareness and promote action on the issue of food scarcity. In my speech, I want to take you through what food insecurity is, what its impacts are, why a documentary would be effective in combating that issue, and why we should even make a change. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with food insecurity, you're probably wondering what food insecurity even is. And according to the USDA's 2006 definition, food insecurity is when an individual has reports of multiple indications of disrupted eating patterns and reduced food intake. And it, that's a fancy definition that really doesn't hit you kind of where it hurts it more. But what it basically means is that people are going hungry. Now, if we take a look at this map again, we can kind of see the distribution. As I said before, the Midwest is doing a little okay, but remember that's still almost one in 10 people going hungry. But the South is just rampant with food insecurity. And whenever you calculate all this out, according to Feeding America, a nonprofit focused to ending hunger in America, 2014 report, we, it averages out to about 14.7% on the whole. And now that's a lot. But that statistic didn't really hit me until I heard that. That means 49 million people are going hungry every day in America. And if you look at this map again, you can see Texas is one of the most affected. And that got me to wondering what's going on in Texas. According to that same report, Texas has a food insecurity rate of 18.6%. Here compared to the national average, it is 4% higher than the national average, making it a huge issue. We are actually the third most food insecure state in the nation, ranking only behind Arkansas and Mississippi. So it's a big issue for us. Now, with all these issues of food insecurity, I start to wonder, other than just being hungry, what does it do? Well, according to a 2014 Harvard article called The Hunger Obesity Paradox, there's a strong correlation between obesity, not obesity and food insecurity. And that's because when you're food insecure, you tend to eat food, cheap foods like refined carbs such as ramen instead of having a well-balanced meal. And with, whenever you eat nothing but refined carbs, your body immediately translates that into sugar. That translates into weight gain, which in the end can lead to health issues such as obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular diseases. And when we're leaving 49 million Americans vulnerable to these issues, I start to think that we have a veritable health crisis on our hands. But how is a documentary going to even help that? Well, you may say it's like naive of me or even pretentious to say that I can create a documentary that's going to change uh, hunger in America, end hunger in America. And I'm not really aiming at that particularly. What I'm aiming at is to create a localized documentary that can help in hunger in Dallas itself. Because if we can do a documentary, we can take the abstract of poverty and of suffering and make it real to the individuals, the viewers watching it, and make them really feel that something is going on with it. And to give an example of a documentary that just did just that, I want to take a look at a place at the table. Magnolia Pictures published this film in 2012, and it really had an impact on me personally, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people. A Place at the Table took the story of a rural girl in Colorado and a single mom in Philadelphia, and combined it with all these big facts to give you this compelling story that really just hooked you in and convinced you that hunger is a big problem in our nation, but it left something out. It didn't tell you what to do next. And so what we want to do is to create a documentary that tells you what to do next. And by doing that, we want to make it localized. What we're going to do is we're going to hold a mirror up to Dallas and say, these are your problems, this is how you fix them. And so by doing that, we hope to pull in with the pathos of the individuals in Dallas, their own neighbors, and then show them things in their own neighborhood that they can make change with. Organizations like City Square and uh, others in this and others in Dallas. But while we're making the change, we've got to ask, why are we even making change? I mean, the United States has a strong free market economy. That's kind of an inherent part of who we are. 
And according to Howard Barbanel in a Huffington Post article published in 2014, titled, In a Free Market Economy, Income Inequality Will Always Be a Fact of Life. Basically saying, as long as we have this free market economy we have, income inequality is going to happen. And at this point in time, that income inequality is causing things like hunger. And now, one of the biggest justifications for, excuse me, one of the biggest justifications for a market, free market system is utilitarianism. Now, utilitarianism believes in justifying your ends via just finding your means via your ends. And the ends is the greatest happiness overall. And in this case, the means is putting individuals into poverty. And now, we don't believe that those effects, impacts are exactly just. And that was from his 2009 book, Justice. Um, we believe, rather, in a more Kantian or Rawlsian ethic that believes that individuals should be treated as ends in themselves. And we believe that these means that are leading people to hunger are wrong. What we believe is more economic rights for individuals, and we want to show that in our documentary. Now, we're not going to completely change opinions immediately with this documentary, but instead what we want to do is show people what inequality really looks like. We want to put a metaphorical pebble in their shoe that they carry around with them, where they question whether the current system is just, where they take a critical lens rather than, rather than their blindly accepting dogma. And so I started out this speech by saying that a documentary is a good option to both raise awareness and promote action on the issue of food scarcity. In order to tell you about that, first I went into what food scarcity even, uh, food, scar food inequality even is. And I stated that food inequality basically means that people are going hungry and that's affecting 49 million Americans, of which 18.6% of Texas are included in that. Next, I stated that a documentary would be of help with this because it can emotionally compel people, and if it was localized, it could tell them what action to take next. And lastly, I stated that we're doing this because we believe in a liberal ethic, an ethic that wants to treat individuals as ends rather than means in the system. And finally, I want to say that, you know, this, though this may not be the kind of thing that changes the nation immediately, I really do believe that it's something that we can create an example in Dallas of people will see and say, hey, if that can happen in Texas, it can happen here.